like it did not consider sorority life. Like no, and then, yeah, 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 okay. And then I met some guys who happened to be in some fraternities, mm-hmm. and they were like, oh, you'd be great in a sorority, like you'd fit in right away. And I was like, still hesitant, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they forced me to go to the booths, fall quarter, the booths, mm-hmm. right? And I ended up going to a booth, the, the worst booth you could possibly think of, out of all the booths of all the sororities, I went to the one that had the most intimidating group of girls mm-hmm. who, let's just say, did not look like me. Okay. And they were say, quite tall. Do you want to say the name? <laughs> or you don't want to put it out there? I mean, they were all just blonde and tall. Okay, I, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And it, and do you want to say it? I, I, it, well, I don't know who they were, but I, I, I think they were. <laughs> Hey guys, this is the It's About Time podcast. I'm the host, Joel Sandoval Franco. Thank you so much for clicking and watching, guys. We have an amazing show today. We have an amazing guest with us. Hello. Hi, I'm Savannah. Nice to meet you. (laughs) It's going to be a fun one. A lot of energy, a lot of upped up. Yeah. Even though it's late (laughs) at night, I feel like we're... We're going to have a good... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you guys are tuned in for a good show. Remember to say this at the beginning now because usually, like, I save it till the end. Mm -hmm. But just so people know. Yeah. That they can subscribe. Totally. And watch every other video you guys want to click. Definitely. But, um, yeah. Let's just get into it. So there's no no real format, right? There's no real format to what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. We're kind of just free-flowing. Cool, cool, cool. Going to have a good conversation. All right, sounds good. Talking about... um, you yeah so i'd love to get to know you yes um and thank you for having me on here oh, by yeah, the way i really course. appreciate it i'm so excited to be here of course of course of yes course. yeah well let's you know what let's start off with where we first met and how we first met. okay that sounds like a great <laughs> idea because it's a good story <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually i didn't remember <laughs> where i met you mm-hmm. and you just reminded me earlier yeah um but i feel like when we did meet and, and we met at your place, right? Yeah, yeah, at my place, yeah. Yeah, and you were bartending. I and was I can bartending. say that, right? <laughs> yes, say, yeah. yeah, yeah, so <laughs> we're fine. You, you okay. can have a good time. Okay, You cool. can have a good time. Everything's going to be good. Yeah, and I feel like I didn't know a lot of people there. Uh-huh. And so I was definitely going back to the bar a lot <laughs> because I was like, well, what do I do now? Like, uh, I don't know these people. I was yeah, trying to yeah. make friends here and there, but they'd come and go. Yeah. But you were always there. You were yes. my rock for the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was mean, like, yeah. yeah. I thought I thought we were having a good time. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I, th- I feel mm-hmm. like we clicked. We had a good time. Pouring you some drinks. Yeah. Talking, yeah. You were around. always there, and you were like kind of <laughs> sober, and like I felt like you were down to talk to me, and I don't know. I don't remember much right now, <laughs> but I like there was definitely like some sort of connection that we made, some sort of yeah, like it was nice. Yeah. It was a good time. We had a good time. Yeah. That led to later things that night where we ended up being in the same room for the tattoo. I know. Yeah. And I thought you got a tattoo. I no, thought I you did. got a tattoo. <laughs> Cap out with eight on your thigh, but that was someone else. <laughs> that was someone else. Oh, my God. That's I had funny. no idea. I was actually going to ask you about it. But no. <laughs> do you have any tattoos? No, I don't have. Oh, okay. I don't have. Me I've always thought about it, though. Yeah. I mean, I think. Like in the back of my head. Yeah. Kind of thing. But not like that. Not like what happened that night. Oh, my God. Who was that then? Just friends of friends. We we personally didn't know them. No. No, we didn't know them. I thought he was a pipe. No, they weren't pipes. Who? Okay, Trevor Marcy wasn't. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy that got a tattoo. The also. guy that had the tattoo again was not in pipe. What? He was just a friend of a friend. That's why we were all so confused about what was going on. Exactly. Yeah, That's a totally. genuine reaction. And I was there, and you didn't <laughs> even know me. <laughs> oh yeah. my god. That's why it was such a it was a, such a memorable night. Such yeah, a fun night. I think so too. Yeah, it was super fun. So where exactly were you then? Oh no, you were in like <coughs> in the middle of the the room, like sitting on the floor doing the tattoos, weren't you? So at one point, so at most of the time I was I was sitting on the bed with Tuan. So the people I knew, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, kind yeah. of just all sitting on the bed, kind of yes. laughing and just Got like it. 
what is going on? Yeah, <laughs> you I know? love that. And then watching us just entertain then, you guys. <laughs> well, yeah, what was his name again? Uh, Trevor. Trevor Marcy. Yeah, yeah I Trevor. Like call him Trevor Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, I ended up. Shout getting, out, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, I ended up. I've already talked about him twice on podcasts. Oh no, I, he's I forgot, famous. I forgot his name. I forgot his name. But Trevor, I gave the skateboard to the infamous skateboard. Yes, which I sketched. <laughs> yes, you did. On his thigh, yes, I did that did. myself. Yes, so. you did. <laughs> oh my God, Trevor, I hope you come back home soon. He's in ta- <laughs> Tanzania right now. Oh great my guy, God. Great guy. <laughs> He also, um, the only reason I think he let me give him a tattoo was because I was the bartender and we also no way. had a good time. Wow, that was his like payment to you. Yeah, I think so. You guys uh, also had a good time, really. Yeah, we were trying to, people started to like try to give me tips that night. No. Because I guess that's how wow. people felt, like a rock. Like yeah, you were come. like the rock. That you were, and I was just, if they like had no one to talk to, they could always just go to came. you and be like, "What's up?" Yeah, because you were like you were fine. Yeah. Like if yeah. no one was talking to you, you would just still be there. And yeah, be like, All I right, did whatever. It. I'm yeah. chilling. I, yeah, I was chilling, making drinks. Yeah, good drinks and shots. I thought that was super cool. Yeah. I was like, but then it's also like, I mean, it's what I like to do. You know, I like yeah. to talk to people. Oh, yeah. So like, I was doing what I'm doing now. Yeah, but totally. just at a party scene. <laughs> yeah, like a more casual. Yeah, scene. just having a good time. Yeah. talking to people. But I liked how you let people approach you. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't like go out of your way to like be like, oh, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm just gonna stand here, do Bartend. what I gotta do, mm-hmm. give people their drinks, let them be happy, and mm-hmm. if they want to talk to me, they can do that. Yeah, it's true. That's what I thought was super cool. <laughs> I appreciated that. Yeah. You know? Well, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. But that's <laughs> what I was telling you. Like I felt more inclined to. Which is funny now that you don't remember that I was the bartender. Well, now but I do remember you knew, as that person, yeah. I knew in the back of my head, I was like, oh, like we had a good time that night. I'm yeah. sure we're going to have a good, yes. nice conversation. You know awesome. I mean? yeah, yeah, totally. I did not expect that at all. I was just like, oh, this is some bartender. Like, he seems cool. I had no idea. He was thinking that in the back of his mind. Oh, my yeah. God. I know. I know, huh? Wow. I know. Well, I guess I made a really good impression. <laughs> yes, I'm you so did. happy yes, about did. that. Yes, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right, so, so tell me about yourself. So mm-hmm. started yes. off with, yes. so where are you from? So I'm from Long Beach, California. Awesome. And um, I'm a student at UCI. I am a fourth year international studies major and global awesome. sustainability minor. Awesome. And um, I guess where I come from, like my mom was a refugee from Cambodia um, during the Khmer Rouge, when communism uh, was spread throughout Southeast mm-hmm. Asia. So she moved to California when she was 18, and that's where she met my father um, in Long Beach, California. Wow. And they had me. <laughs> <laughs> so I am mixed. I am half white, half Cambodian. Interesting. Yes. Awesome. Yes. It's a great. It, there's, um, I don't know if this is derogatory, so I'm sorry if this is like offending, but like, okay. it's called like. The mix is like hapa, or is that not? Yeah, my friends use that word, and like two of my cl- know, closest that, hapa that, girlfriends use that is word. That bad I don't or is that... know. I mean, to me, I we've been using that. Okay. So what okay, cool. my girlfriend Kelsey re- refers to it as as someone with Asian descent. Okay. So yeah, it, yeah, that's usually as yeah. How I think that's how it. she refers to it. So yeah, I don't know about that one, mm. um, but I do. I'm okay with um, saying mixed hapa multiracial. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Are you, by the way? Um, not really. I guess technically later down the line, but no, I'm I'm Mexican. Both my parents were born in Mexico. Oh, nice. And then um, my dad came over for work, and they're yeah. all like, so I guess like immigrants. But yeah. like, um, my dad was in like uh, architecture construction, so he came over. Cool. Guess he liked it. <laughs> yeah. Ended up liking California. I'm sure. First thing he first city he was here at was San Francisco. Um, oh. And then after San Francisco, came to SoCal, Downey. So we've always Definitely. been in this area. Yeah. Um, and then I was the firstborn here in the United States, so, which is super cool. And then Oh, firstborn in the U.S.? Like, yeah, of my family. Oh, of your family. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you have siblings? Yes. I have uh, two older brothers. Okay. Um, a younger sister, another younger sister, and a younger brother. Oh so it's six of us. God. It's a big family. Jeez. It's a cool family. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I'm really yeah. big on family, too. Yeah? So, yeah, definitely. You have brothers and sisters? Okay, so I do have a half brother, okay, Randy, and he is about like a, a little bit older, thirty five. Okay. Um, and he was born in a refugee camp in Thailand. Wow. During the time my mom was escaping. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and he's full Cambodian. Wow. So, but we're we're close. But yeah, he's my half brother. And then I have 
my sister, who mm-hmm. is full blood related, just one year older than me, and she is my best friend since day one. I love her so much. She's always awesome. been there for me. That's awesome. She's the big sister like you've always wanted. Yeah. Everyone's always wanted. Yeah. That this family is a really big thing also for me. Yeah. And I, awesome. I think maybe that comes from like having a big family and then always having something to do. Yeah. Always someone to talk to. Yeah, and so. always someone to like be there for you. Like mm-hmm. if anything goes down here, like yeah. your friends with school, like you always have family <clears throat> to go back to. And they're like the people that know you most too. Yeah. Definitely. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there's I think there's this yeah. like um important aspect of like the way you grew up and they're the people that were there with you since the beginning so they know where you come from yeah you know what i mean or like friends yeah. that you meet you're in college yeah. completely different lives yeah. coming into college yeah you know what i mean where you can relate on certain things yeah but there's something about like your brother and sister that went through the exact same thing i know you know what yeah. i mean growing up yeah. so when you talk about things like there's a better understanding or it's like you know what i mean and it's yeah. just like yeah yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I feel like when we're in college, like we are a certain person with our, like mm-hmm. a certain character. Like I'm not saying we're fake, but we are a certain person. Yeah. Like when we are with our friends and whatever. But like, your family knows you since you were like a child, and since you were like that silly person that you yeah. were, and it's just Honestly. like a whole other person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I was gonna ask you about, so, pretty much about your where you came from yeah. so the only thing I wanted to ask or like one of the things I wanted to bring up when you were talking about um, your mom being a refuge yeah because one of the classes I'm taking right now is like international relations yes definitely in East Asia yeah with Yuri I don't know if you ever took him Yuri, Robert no. Yuri no um, which is all which has been super interesting we studied uh, communism in China and then oh, the are you studying of, like, like the modern day communism in China um, kind of it's just more how yeah i guess it would be modern it's like yeah debating whether the u.s should have ties and relations in east asia mm-hmm. totally, or if we totally. should be pulling out since it's like such a big topic right now oh my god yeah i know it's super interesting yes Very interesting definitely class. definitely yeah. <laughs> because i just came back from studying abroad in shanghai really and you last fall quarter yeah yeah. Fall quarter, yeah 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 i was studying abroad in shanghai for from beginning of September till mid December, mm-hmm. and it was just yeah crazy experience. And I definitely have a lot to say about like modern day communism in China. Yeah. and like how was that? Yeah, that's I mean like, that's awesome. Totally. Let's okay, totally cool. talk about that. <laughs> Actually, I was interviewed. Um, I totally forgot this about this, but I was interviewed by the national um, China. Uh, I forgot their official name. Uh-huh. It was like National News of China. Something. Okay. Totally forgot their official name. Um, oh my god! But I'm can't, I can't wait till that's out, actually. But it's one, right? I'm guessing it's one network, right? Like the BBC, like yeah, British. something like that. So it'd be like okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. That's awesome. But they they came and interviewed me as well, some my about, other American classmates about w- how we as Americans feel about China. Oh, interesting. After living in, in China, hmm. because they're I mean obviously here in the U S us. Americans have a certain perspective of yeah. China based off of the news, you mm-hmm. know, and exactly. and there's there's definitely and the president, of course, yeah, totally, and yeah. so there's definitely a lot of um, just like main things that we think about, main topics that we think about when we hear China, mm-hmm. you know, like the trade wars, yeah, or right now the coronavirus, yes, and communism, mm-hmm. um, and there's just such a big difference between like what. Us, what the Western world world values mm-hmm. and what China values. Yeah. And for a long time, I feel like being here, growing up in in America, I we've prioritized like individual rights and and, and privacy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's always been important, which is still important to me. Yeah. But after studying abroad in China, I learned that you know there. Um, politics re- goes back to like their values which are slightly different and and their values prioritize um, more of the community yeah, as a communal. whole yeah, yeah, rather than like the individual mm-hmm. and that's why they have the the politics that they do yeah that's why they are more communist because mm-hmm. it's kind of like everyone is collectively doing the same thing in order to reach a goal as as a whole yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah. no that's i think that's something very interesting yeah that you brought up 
because <clears throat> especially for people that are listening that are taking classes in college yeah uh, regarding that because political science and international relations is one of like the most sought after GEs right so yeah. some people are always going to take some sort of political science things and definitely I think a great thing to always remember in the back of your head is when you're learning all these theories and all these like set ways of thinking like communism and everything yeah I think there's an importance of learning and knowing the culture behind it totally you know what I mean because totally. one of the main reasons why uh policy is so different politics are so different around the world is because cultural like differences yeah or like where you said perfectly like we value individualism yeah and we value like certain things that make the u.s what it is yeah, yeah. but also china to themselves it's like they, they are value more different community. things yeah, yeah. so that's so, okay with them mm-hmm. the government that they have yeah in a lot of ways and you you feel like you were able to to feel that and learn that in yeah. that time period that you were studying abroad or do you feel like you would have wanted more time no, I feel like during I was there for a good four months. And four I, months, yeah. okay, that's. And I feel I like you were there for only ten weeks. Oh no no no, four months. Oh yeah wow. yeah, yeah yeah, a whole quarter. Yeah yeah. Would it be and technically like a. Is that? Oh wait, yeah, ten weeks. Yeah. Well, I mean. No, September, but September, October, for... November, and then mid till mid December. No, that's so like, like a semester, right? Yeah, like a semester. Yeah. Technically, it was. Yeah yeah. 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 Dang, was... that's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So you were fully in there. Would you know. so you stayed in Sh- Shanghai? Yeah. Specifically. I had my own place, yeah. Did you? Yeah, well, I had my own room. It was, <laughs> it was called a hotel apartment, so like I okay. had like a hotel room to myself. So this is all new to me. So I like, yeah. so like what what you're describing I've never heard of. So like Shanghai's like Yeah, I know. So whatever know. if you can talk more in detail because I would love to get yeah. more of a picture of sure. where you stayed, yeah. So like I guess in general like mainland China like the majority of it is very different than Shanghai itself because okay. Shanghai is probably one of the top three cities for sure if not the top one city in china Mm -hmm. that has the most expats and foreigners okay in its city so expats as in as in um people that are not chinese that live in china okay or that live in yeah Mm -hmm. in a in china okay um so like not just tourists but like people that um have moved from another country to live in Shanghai Mm -hmm. as a foreigner and to work there for a long term for long term Mm -hmm. or and that's including like students who study abroad there yeah so we have about like 10,000 foreign exchange students every semester in Shanghai and then the population of like foreigners that live in Shanghai is 500,000 so half a million people so it's a huge foreigner community you know what I mean and that's one of the reasons in that city itself right yeah, in so, Shanghai itself. And wow. that's one of the reasons why I decided to study abroad there. It was like partly, yes, I want to understand China as a country and Chinese culture, but mm-hmm. I also wanted to experience what it was like to live in a city that has such a huge foreigner community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't How, get that here in like Yeah, that'd Irvine. be, I feel like that'd be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like in Irvine, like we're all like a we're very kind of unique. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, we're kind oh, of... Oh, Irvine's like, very... We're all like, oh, I'm from the U.S., you're from the U.S., I'm from California. Yeah, like, California. We're, we have similar values, but I, when I was in Shanghai, I met a lot of Germans. Huge German community wow. there. <laughs> and then I've met people from Singapore, India, mm-hmm. Malaysia, hung- Hungary, yeah. all over Europe, you know, like Italy, the U.K., a lot of British people there, mm-hmm. um, Poland, Sweden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of Mexicans as really? well. Study wow. abroad, Mexican study abroad students. Super cool. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, just like from straight Mexico or like oh, Americans. Straight, straight Mexico. Like wow. they, they're you know they're like Mexican students in wow in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, what's the main reason why you wanted to go there? You mentioned it a little bit. So. Yeah. So the, I guess the main reason was like, what like, was the main drive to like go through that whole process of studying abroad and like make. Yeah, yeah I guess because like I. After, like, I was 10 years old, my parents decided to move. Well, my mom decided to move back to Cambodia. My dad went with her to mm-hmm. start a um, tissue production factory. Okay. And ever since then, like, I've, I've lived in Cambodia for five years with them, and I've always kind of been traveling around. I lived in Texas for a little bit, lived in Nevada for a little bit. And, like, moving around and traveling and, and, and exploring, like, new like cultures and and Mm -hmm. meeting new people was always a part of my childhood yeah so like coming to college like i knew i had to study abroad because like 
I'm not used to like being in, in one place, place for the yeah. long for a long that's time. That's so cool. Like that's it's so it's yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely thank you. And so like I knew like oh there's study abroad here like yeah. I have to take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. So my second year I went to Croatia for two quarters. Yeah. And um that was super cool. And then I was like okay I can do it again my senior year, fall quarter. So mm-hmm. I applied again and I went to Shanghai. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. I was actually so I was planning on studying abroad yeah. this fall coming yeah. up to Spain. Oh. But oh, yeah. No, you can't anymore. I know. Oh. Very interesting. Oh my god. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. It's fine though. I mean, I've been to certain places. I've been to Paris. Oh, cool. Which for yeah. like a good a good amount of time with a couple of friends, which is a culture shock. Um I'm sure super it interesting. is. Yeah. I've been to Mexico a couple of times. Cool. Um I went to Florida mm-hmm. recently for my 21st. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> Lucky you. So oh um, it's yeah. been, I want to travel so much more. Yeah. Um, it's such being, a It's just. It really opens your mind up. Like I learned so much about the world in my yeah. classes. So yeah. going to go visit and like being in that, in that world would be absolutely amazing. It's crazy yeah. how much just traveling and living uh, in a new place opens up your mind um, to like, to, uh, to, uh, it, it, to understanding why people do the things they do and mm-hmm. why people act the way they act and why they follow a certain culture. Because, like, especially my mom, who had mm-hmm. suffered so much and had to run away from her home and yeah. lost her father because of communism, you know? So uh, growing up, the word communism and the idea of it That's has always been, like, just, just super, negative. super negative, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then going to live in a country yeah, like I, China is that? Yeah. that is a communist country and being able to open up my mind again to... You know like the their values, yeah, mm-hmm. and like the differences, and like and and understanding the difference between communist China today and the communist Khmer Rouge that was the past yeah. is two different things. Yeah, yeah are two, two different, different things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I really think like traveling and like l- especially living in another yeah. country for a long period of time really opens your mind up to <laughs> and under- to like. This really is one understand. of the reasons I love doing this. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I love doing this because yeah. I learn so much. Yes, exactly. And I'm just going to meet super interesting people. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's like, it's just people are so interesting. And yeah. you're bringing this whole different world I know. that I've never heard of. Yeah. And I've never been exposed to. Yeah. But just to be right here I talking know. to you is and absolutely you're amazing. already experiencing it through me, you <laughs> yeah. know? I think it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like, like what I've been exposed to is just, I mean, I've always been a SoCal kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my well, biggest exposure to uh, being different, I guess, in California is having like immigrant parents. Yeah. And having the culture of like Mexican culture. Yes, like, growing definitely. Up, you know what I mean? Definitely. Like that's my um, reach into outside yeah. the United States and outside California. It's so, like yeah. growing up learning Spanish, knowing how to speak Spanish, yeah. and, like, you know, like, always being somewhat connected to the world. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know. But just hearing, I don't know, it's just, I think it's so interesting. I know. It's, like... <laughs> I'm getting all, like, excited. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I mean, it's it's crazy because, like, you meet someone and you don't really think, like, what their background is. Yeah. And it's crazy, like... It's crazy how much a talk could, like, change. I know. Yeah. I know. And, so like, cool. <laughs> yeah... I just there yeah there's just a lot like of about like my like background that I would like to share you know and that mm-hmm. people don't really know about me when and they first meet me yeah is that yeah. is that like mo- more of the things or would you like to talk about I would love to talk about whatever you want to talk about do you want to share more about um I mean, yeah, that was, like, basically it, just, like... Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. just, like, where my parents came from and, like, what my childhood was like. And, yeah, that's like, awesome. Traveling a lot. So what age, is, yeah. what age were you when you went, when you lived in Cambodia for those so five years? So I, from 10 years old to 15 years old. Wow, that's a pretty big part yeah. of your life. I mean, you kind of hit puberty during that exactly, time. Exactly, yeah, during it's that like, time. Yeah, How and was I was that? homeschooled for three years of that. Three um, years. Wow. Which was really hard on me because I was completely isolated. I lived in my parents' factory, like in, the, in a little apartment above wow. the factory in a very rural part of Cambodia, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And 
we were about a 25 minute drive from the nearest town. We mm-hmm. were like in a forest. Well, what was nice was we were right next to the beach though, mm. which was really Growing cool. Growing up next yeah. to the beach, nice. But three years wow. of homeschool. Of, of, uh, of a very important time yeah. in your life. Exactly, where I'm developing, I'm supposed to be developing social skills. Yeah. And I think that's where <laughs> I feel like I'm not like the most normal like mm. person socially. Okay. Because I didn't grow up in that normal middle school environment. Of like being in the United States University. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Definitely. So you came over so you came over back to the United States during yes. fifteen. 16? About I was about fifteen so years old. So high school. Yeah. How was that? Sophomore year of high school. So what happened was I was so tired of living in Cambodia. I mean, I loved it and thinking about it now, but mm-hmm. as a of course, teenager. Yeah, of course, in that moment. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Mom, Dad, like, I miss California. You mm-hmm. took me away from this place. This was my home. I grew up here. Yeah. And I miss it and I want to go back. So I deci- they decided, I, well, we decided that I would go to a boarding school in Ojai, California, which is near Santa Barbara. Okay. And so I could go to school and I could be taken care of as well because mm-hmm. my parents are still in Cambodia to this day. And so, wow, yeah, what? so they've been there for like 15 years now. Jeez, yeah. while well, you've been here, yeah, wow, yeah. So, who are you, who are you staying with, or like, I don't have a home in <coughs> California. I see my really? aunts, I see my sister, I stay here. It's, wow. it's, it's, it's all over the place. It's really, wow. I know, I know, wow, <laughs> yeah, that's I know. so interesting. I know, yeah. My mom's working on finding a home here, but it's like, yeah, of course. Sometimes you think about it, like, what's the point? She doesn't really live here. Yeah. Like, how often is It'd be this a bigger change be now, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. That's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How's that? I, I, I don't know if it'd be, because um, I don't want to push too much to something that you haven't really talked about or anything. Okay, sure. But, like, how's that been for you? Like, that Not sounds... seeing, not living with my parents since I was, like, I, I feel like that's such a big aspect of growing up is having yeah. your parents with you. Definitely. And At least it was for me in my life. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. Mm-hmm. I, it's a huge part of, they're a huge part of you and, mm-hmm. and supporting you, especially in high school. Yeah. And that was a, one of the things I didn't understand when I was 15 years old. Wow. I miss California so much and I had this idea in my head that, you know, once I go back to California, everything will be normal again. Yeah. Like, so okay. that was like the biggest thing for me. But I went to boarding school and it wasn't normal. Boarding school is not normal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not your typical average SoCal student. Yeah, 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 of course. And so I had totally different experiences there too. And I was also living without my parents. Mm -hmm. So it was like constantly like just this totally different childhood that I had. Yeah. From here to there, it was like different experiences. And it was, it really affected like who I am today, but in a good way, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're like stronger than most people. <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because to be able to go, I don't know, I just feel like I rely on my parents so much. Totally. Growing up. Yeah. 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 So interesting. Yeah. It was like now that I look back at it, I feel like being th- in boarding school been? for three years, like mm-hmm. I could have used that time to live with my parents mm. and I could have given them the opportunity to let them see their children grow up. Yeah. And I took that away from them. And that's the one thing that I do regret. I was about to say, I was like, do you regret? Yeah. Really? I do regret it. I I realized how much, especially my mom, Mm -hmm. appreciated being a mother. Yeah. And I, she didn't get the opportunity to do that for the last three years that she could have been doing that. But don't you think that's a little unfair to think? What do you mean? Like, for yourself, don't you think that's unfair to think that you're taking that away? It's just how life goes, you know? Yeah. And that's why she let me do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I I feel like... I feel like there's so many things that your, like, parents would do for their children where they're, like, they're going to be happier this way. Yeah, totally. You know, then thinking of it as, like, I took that away from my mom. It's like, she's lived her life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she's, like... She Sav's gonna be happier yeah. in California. Totally. You know what I mean, like later down the road. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't know. All these no, like, and that's it's just because the last yeah. thing I would want to think is that you feel bad or like yeah. you feel like you took that away from your mom. Totally, you know totally. I mean? 
and that's as because the only person I know is you and I would want you to be happy <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. and at her she wanted me to be happy too and yeah. then, so of course as a mother she let me do that mm -hmm. but now looking back at it I feel like I didn't mm. really consider um, what we lost as a family yeah you know in terms okay. of experience mm -hmm. of this tip normal like family mm -hmm. lifestyle yeah. that we we didn't have because I left when I was 15 I was 15 oh, that's crazy you know it's yeah <clears throat> three years that was just phone calls I was living wow. off with my parents off of phone calls yeah um, but I made it up because by my third year in college mm -hmm. my mom was kind of retired by this point okay. so she actually moved to Irvine for a whole year my whole wow, junior year really and we lived together in an apartment and it was super so this fun. past year yeah this That's past awesome. year <laughs> yeah so she got to be a mom again which was like kind of fun. <laughs> we like relived this That's great. time period that we like missed out on mm -hmm. um, and it was just like it was cool that sounds awesome yeah. that sounds beautiful yeah so yeah. I'm I'm happy that we did that yeah you know? yeah of course yeah that's so. awesome <laughs> really weird but yeah <laughs> No, for sure. Backwards. <laughs> very um, unique. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. To hear that. Yeah. Because that's so not a typical. I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not at but all. But that's awesome. That's like makes you who you are. Yeah. Makes you so interesting. Yeah. It's so easy to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I know. I just. Yeah. It's been it's weird. Most people they live with their parents till they're eighteen, and sometimes they even continue living with their parents yeah. in college if they mm -hmm. like commute. Um, yeah, and for me, I guess like I've always kind of been really independent from my parents, and but that's, that's what made yeah. me allow made me study abroad. Mm -hmm. like, I was never attached scared. anywhere. Yeah, I, I feel like that's I exactly. feel like that's something uh, really important, or at least something I see in you mm -hmm. after you said that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you're not afraid because you're not attached to any specific place. So you're willing to take exactly. risk, be free, you know, exactly. like go yeah. explore because it's, you've always been, I think that's something I've talked about it before once on the podcast of like this, this beauty and this um, importance of being by yourself Yeah. and learning to be on your own and totally. being okay by being, because I'm guessing like yeah. when you're studying abroad, you're not always with someone. You know, like yeah. there's times where it's just you. Yeah. By yourself. Yeah. And you have to be okay with that. Yeah. And be happy and enjoy things, but on your own. Yeah. And I think because most of your life, you're not going to have someone right next to you. You're not going to be. I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's exactly the point of studying abroad is like you're yeah, placed yeah. into this like super random place out of yeah. the middle of nowhere. Like, you've never awesome been before yeah. With people you don't <laughs> even know. Yeah. And you've got to just do it you mm -hmm. you gotta survive to make it work you gotta yeah. make your friends you gotta find the grocery store you gotta mm -hmm. adapt to the environment yeah. adapt to the culture and yeah. it's like a it's a game in a way it's that's like awesome. an, a challenge yeah which I think, is why i love it <laughs> yeah i think and i think that's something we share yeah personality wise yeah we're like i see that as like something so awesome and something yeah. i want to do so much exactly where like other people if we see that and be like so scared no it's fine i'm gonna stay in socal Exactly. Like, I am okay. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're like, yeah, I would see that as like, like you were talking about it. I'm like so excited. I'm like, oh, I want to do that so bad. I know. <laughs> it's a challenge. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you can always come back home to SoCal mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Like, it's just a tight, <laughs> right small after. time period. Yeah. 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 So we took a little break right now. Yeah. <clears throat> we took a small little break because <laughs> um, the stabilizer, yeah. the thing holding up the camera, um, kind of died on us for a little bit so yeah. we took a little break still kept the conversation going yeah we did sad that the camera wasn't on <laughs> yeah it's okay <laughs> had a good conversation um it was nice yeah. to take a, nice to take a little break yeah nice little break yeah just to i guess get to know each other even more yeah yeah definitely which is cool <laughs> but we don't remember what we were talking about <laughs> <laughs> i guess we left off on just um just knowing you and we just yeah. Had a great time listening to your story and yeah. you opening up was um, very insightful, very interesting, and getting to know a different a life, uh, getting to know a different part of a world, and yeah. Yeah, that's what, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you want to tell them about this, these beautiful mugs <laughs> brought by Sal? I did. I bring. I brought mugs. 
Shout out to my amazing yes. sorority that I love so Let's much, go. Kappa Alpha Theta. Theta. Yes, Theta this is gross. the mug I got when I joined. That's awesome. And I still have it to this day. Three years? Um, three I'm a fourth year. I joined when I was a first year, so it's been about three and a half years. Yeah, yeah. Three years. Well, yeah, three, almost three and a half years. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Die yeah. hard. Yeah, same. I mean, that's, Me how, too. that's hopefully how I'm going to go out fourth year, Pike. You know, yeah, away. definitely. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> it's... You join and you never leave. You know, it's yeah. just a commitment. It's like yeah. a family. Greek life is just extremely family. Yeah. We're family. Yeah, definitely. No, but I love it. Well, it it kind of added a little zest, a little uh, more professionality. Yeah, you know, right. So. You should have your own mugs next time. <laughs> yeah, that's what you should do. Yeah, Take you out your so? own mugs with your <laughs> with your brand. <laughs> That'd be cool, huh? Yeah. Maybe yeah. that'll be my gift to you. It's <laughs> like a awesome. thank you. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's funny. These mugs, this is made of metal. Okay. Every, and I made a mistake. I always make the mistake of putting this in the microwave. Mm. And then it fuck, the freaking lightning goes off in the <laughs> microwave. Because it's made of, this is metal, which yeah. is ridiculous. Cause What's it's the first time that ever happened to you? My, Do you the remember? lightning? Yeah, the lightning. Oh, so I just got this like when no, I came back No, but I'm talking about like in your life. Like when you're a kid. Lightning in the microwave? That's yeah. never happened to me. Until a Never. Because I, I always know. Never put metal in the microwave. Until this mug. Until this mug. Because why would you <laughs> think a mug? Why would you think put a mug in a microwave? I remember the first time that happened to me when I was little, and it freaked me out so much. I don't know what it was. Lightning. Yeah. It was like, um, what was it? Oh, this this plate. Um, normal plate. Normal, yeah. Like just a normal plate. But, yeah, it was like. The outer rim. That's ridiculous. That's like so the stupid. smallest amount had a little bit of metal. It's so. so why it would off, they think just, of that? And I was like, Whoa, what, the, <laughs> what is going on? What is happening right now? I know like, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of fire, couldn't it? Yeah, I think so. It it's just crazy. freaks you out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. But that's I funny. feel like that's so stupid. That's so why would you make like plates, bowls? <laughs> Mugs that you know is going in the microwave. That like you wouldn't think is made of metal because yeah. the majority of it is not made of metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you just put it in the microwave thinking, oh, I'm just gonna heat up my 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 tea or my food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then just, <laughs> just it's so yeah, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why ugh, it's ridiculous. It's mug. It's meant for hot things. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Yeah, but uh, I've learned my lesson now. Only this mug. Only that mug. Only yeah. The, the theta mug. So. Yeah. <laughs> theta. Yes. Life. Yes. So how was that? How was that? How was that so far? And how was that throughout your college career? I guess like coming into UCI, I knew for sure I was like Greek life was not even something I considered like mm-hmm. at all. My freshman year, fall quarter, like I was making friends. I was gonna join some other clubs. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. No way. Like I did not consider sorority life. Like no and way. Then, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I met some guys who happened to be in some fraternities, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Oh, you'd be great in a sorority. Like you fit in right away." And I was like, still hesitant. Yeah, yeah. But they forced me to go to the booths fall quarter, the booths, mm-hmm. right? And I ended up going to a booth, the the worst booth you could possibly think of, out of <laughs> all the booths of all the sororities. I went to the one that had. The most intimidating group of girls mm-hmm. who let's just say did not look like me okay and they were say, quite tall do you want to say the name <laughs> or you don't want to put it out there i mean they were all just blonde and tall okay i think i know who you're talking about yeah and it and do you want to say it i i well i don't know who they were but i i, I think they were delta, delta gamma, gamma. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. I mean, nothing against that, but I was so <laughs> t- intimidated. So funny. For sure, DG's. Yeah. yeah. And DG's very different, though, now. Yeah? Oh, a little bit more. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I was a freshman. I was yeah, I was wearing a sweatshirt and a hoodie, and it was like, yeah. hi, I think I'm interested. And then they kind of <laughs> just gave me a brochure, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 and I, after that terrible experience, I just walked away immediately I was like yeah this definitely this is, is not for me be. and I was mm-hmm. like no way why would you think this is for me that I don't fit in at all yeah um so that's what happened my fall quarter but then mm-hmm. I don't know when did you join Greek life fall quarter freshman year okay right okay, yeah. okay okay so you had it a just experience. for me it was like my um good friend that pretty much told me to join was yeah. like Joel no other time you're gonna be able to go through pledgeship Without it affecting your grades, do it fall quarter. Do I, it agree with, I agree with that. Just I go, agree with that. go all the way yep. with it. 
And I agree. One of the best decisions I did because Good. it didn't affect my grades at all, and I it got me. Yeah, in the and then fam, you were yeah. a part of the family since mm-hmm. day one, which makes it so much easier for me. Mm-hmm. Cause then it's it's weird if you join like third year because then you're like older, but you're like yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah. terms of like for status, sure still like still good lower. to do, but like yeah. it's just different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So my fall quarter freshman year, I didn't was not in Greek life, <laughs> and I actually did go through this sort of you know college depression where okay. you don't have a lot of friends you don't know yeah, how to like meet people because mm-hmm. you have classes with so many different people how do you like make the time yeah and you you know you go to the cafeteria when you wanted to go to the cafeteria to eat food but so it's you like have the eatery? Sorry. yeah we had the ant eatery uh-huh. yeah and but like i'd go by myself because like i didn't know where like when my yeah, other friends were going and like mm-hmm. i was still developing this friendship so it was definitely a very lonely time yeah and so that was very difficult for me and then the same friends that encouraged me to um, join Greek Life the first quarter continue to say, yeah, this is for you. You should join a sorority. Yeah, yeah. So I gave Were it you going out during I that was. time? Yeah, like I was. Parties, like the parties. Exactly. Getting and that's where I met this girl named Hillary okay. who was in Theta. Okay. And There's always that one person. Yes. Yeah, that just and she that. really like <laughs> opened my mind to it in a really great way yeah. that – and and she didn't she never put any pressure on me but she was like when the time came winter yeah. quarter of you know week one where the, everyone was rushing she was like hey you should come out yeah and I was like yeah okay I'll give it another shot yeah of course yeah yeah and you know I coached the theta yeah immediately <laughs> I loved it it was for me and my big sis is also a Hapa which I love awesome yes. yeah that's awesome yeah and so I clicked with her immediately yeah. My my big bros, um, main reason why I joined was a good friend of mine that I got to know in high school. Shout out to Culper. <laughs> His name's Culper. Oh, he's a Hapa. Cool. Um, awesome guy. He's one of the reasons. But also another guy, and I've talked about him so many times, and I can't wait till he comes on the podcast. <laughs> I've been mentioning his name a lot. I haven't hit him up, so that's my <laughs> fault. But um, his name's Damien. Yeah. And I've told this story so many times, but um, he just told me everything I wanted to hear as a freshman <laughs> to make me join. Yeah. Oh, like what? Uh, <laughs> like, like lied to you? Like what did he say? No, he just told me all the things I wanted to hear. Like he's like, uh, Pike gets all the girls. Oh and... my god! So that's how they rush you guys. <laughs> I see. I Come wouldn't on. know because I joined sorority. They don't tell. Yeah. They don't say that kind of stuff. <laughs> These things that girls want to hear. I don't. Yeah. I don't even know. It's just like. Um, yeah, I've told this story so many times, but, like, it's, like, um, I get to the booth, the Pike booth, like, I was sort of thinking about it, not thinking about it. I was, yeah. like, maybe, maybe not, Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then I hear him. <laughs> He's, like, the epitome of, like, what Pike is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, tall, good-looking guy. <laughs> Love so that. He was talking to these other kids, uh, these other freshmen, and he's, like, telling them, he's like, oh, we have the best GPA. Yeah, totally. We, we have, like, the number one GPA. And he was like, we have the number one GPA, blah, blah, blah. And then he comes to me, and he looks at me, and I'm like, hi, like, I think I'm interested in Pike. I know um, Colfer. He's in Pike. He's like, yeah. oh, yeah, I know Colfer. And he looks at me, and he goes, you want me? He's like, he, he looks at me, and he goes, I'm just going to be real with you. And I was like, I was like, okay. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, he goes, he goes Every sorority loves us. And I was like... Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> and I just started dying. And I was like... Like, inside, I was like... Uh, and then he's like... He's like, yeah, if you want to have a good time, like, we are, we're having a party tonight. Oh, my God. And I was like... And that sold me. <laughs> oh, my God. I went, God. went to the party, had an amazing time. Wow. That I mean, a lot he of... He really did sell you. He did tell me. He did. Yeah. But that's, like, my fresh... That was my freshman mind. My, you know, getting in college, just wanting to go have fun. Like, yeah, get to know people. So. Definitely. He really played into that, so I mean, love wow. him, like, love him now so much. Um, but yeah, uh, it was, like that's my. But I now like it, it became so much more though. Yeah. Throughout the years, like, after first year, after a little bit of second year, like of the party and everything, it became a lot more um, the connection. A support like, system. Support support network. system, like. Yeah. Everybody I live with now is or was in Pike, like. All my yeah, roommates, like definitely. the people I wake up to and definitely. get to like have fun and talk all night, like yeah, it's all them. So I love that. 
that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I love living in the house because that's the only opportunity mm-hmm. for the house that like us as a sorority. That's not something no Pike has had in a while. Yeah. Because we don't have a house because yeah. we got kicked out. <laughs> yeah. But totally. like, how's that? How how is how is living in the house? I feel like, in a way, you guys already still have that because you still live. You guys put the effort to live in houses off campus and next to each other because you guys are neighbors. Yeah. So, in a way, you still have that. Shout out to Costa Mesa. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And I feel like, in a way, like, whatever you experience in those Costa Mesa houses is pretty much similar to what we experience Mm -hmm. in the Theta house. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And, like, I love it. I feel like, as... Like I don't know what I would do if I didn't live in the sort in the Theta house yeah. because like it's just so much harder to be close with your sisters mm-hmm. um, if you're not yeah. like living in the house because in it, for me sometimes it's hard for me to put in the effort to like be like hey let's let's go do something yeah, yeah you know of course um, especially with girls that I'm not as close with mm-hmm. I still want to see them yeah and get to know them and yeah, get to know them yeah, but yeah. in a way that's not so like forceful slash invasive yeah yeah, yeah and so like being living in the house is an opportunity for me to like run into girls and be mm-hmm. like how was your day you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. can i get to know you a little bit um tell me a little bit mm-hmm. um which is what i love and i appreciate that because especially like for me like i being homeschooled for three years and moving around so much never having a stable long-term friendship yeah. it's always been hard for me to um socialize like normally i guess so that's why i love living in the house because it helps me get to like keep in touch with everybody yeah and it's like a constant support system kind of yes totally totally. just to have people around yeah yeah i i I, really appreciate that mm -hmm, and i can totally like agree with you like living in the house and everything like um like a big thing for me is like not being at home like i was always like always been a big family person yeah so like to have this sort of like friendship when I'm away from home, totally. like back home and being here and everything, yeah. like in Irvine, like being able to leave school, get out of school and go back and hang out with friends. Exactly. And, you know what I mean? Like, it's nice. Yeah. It's cool. So Definitely. believing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because like you're so used to like your, your family always being there. Mm-hmm. It's hard to just like live in like an apartment or like a single yeah. where like you're just on your own. Like, honestly, it sucks being like alone yeah. like mm-hmm. like it's so great just having someone to like live with it's so great yeah, yeah. so you live uh, do you live in a single in the house or do you live in a i live in a double with my roommate jackie you met her today okay yes i love yes, her yeah, yeah, yeah. yes so uh, she's my roommate we everyone who lives in the in the theta house lives in a double room awesome yeah so cool. like i don't know it's just nice having someone around yeah yeah you know what i mean <laughs> um it's got it's, it's pros and cons of course totally like living in a double it's because there, yeah. there are some people that, like, yes. n- need that privacy or, like, feel like they need that privacy. Totally. And, you know, yeah. But in a way, I feel like Jackie and I kind of, you know, we both have our own lives. Like, we have our own classes. We have stuff we do all day, all night. Mm-hmm. So, like, in a way, like, the room's pretty much empty mo- for the most and part. So, we still... At the end of the... Yeah. That was the best thing about freshman year. Freshman year was the only time I lived in a double. Lived yeah. With someone, like a roommate. Yeah. Every other year, I had a single. Because, personally, oh, really? I needed... Like, that's what I was saying. Which like, is fine. I needed that kind of, like, yeah. privacy and, like, knowing that when I come home, like, I can be by myself. Totally, you know? totally. Um, yeah. Because being in the in the frat and everything, like, I've always, I was always around people and always <laughs> with people. Totally. So, like, I always needed that, like, to come back and be like, Whew. Yeah. Let me relax. Watch some YouTube videos. I completely agree. Eat. Yeah. Food that's going to make me fat, but no one else gets <laughs> to see. <laughs> Just exactly. relax, have a good time, watch Netflix. You know? Yeah. I feel like um, it's nice for people to have, like, their own single room, mm-hmm. but, like, be able to just leave that room and, like, see people immediately. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, like, like, a living room space mm-hmm. area that way. That's why I like the can, Costa like, Mesa rejoin. house. Yeah. I have a single, but when exactly. I go out to the living room, I get to talk to, like, everybody. Yeah. How many people live in that house? Seven. <laughs> no. You have a single? And How many single. rooms are there? There's a lot of rooms and a garage. And <laughs> people live in the garage too. Yes, in the garage. No. Love you, Jack. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. See, that's what I want. Because like you live in a house, there's no, always going to be people downstairs. No, we are always like open to. We're oh, love that with everything that's going on with um, the coronavirus and everything. Yeah. Um, the um, what's being suggested for the freshmen is for them not to return. 
I don't know if you saw that email. I did not. So, uh, coming back, spring break. Yeah. It's advised for them not to come back to on-campus housing. The freshmen? Oh, the yeah. dorms. Oh, the dorms I heard about that. and yeah, all yeah. the on-campus housing. So, Damn. literally, um, recently, one of the freshmen that I know most, yeah, like I'm closest with, uh, Jordan Hendricks, Pike. Yeah. Um, he was telling me that a lot of the freshmen are canceling their housing. They're canceling their housing contracts oh with UCI so they don't get charged. Yeah. And going back home. Wow. Because all classes are going to be online next quarter. Yeah. All spring quarter is going to be all online. Yeah. So saving money and just seeing no value in being there. Totally, yeah. They're all going back. Yeah. So, but there are a lot of kids that can't go back because they're out of state or they live out of the country yeah that are in pike and just people that we know well yeah so we are we're opening up our house no, yeah we have like are? we have that's like the best we have like two spots oh. that are like for any freshman that can't go back home that's like, amazing yeah that's why i love just being in a sorority or like in a in group yeah. life in general we built this community that's not just yeah. like a club where it's like where we focus on one thing mm -hmm. but we are like a family where we support yeah. each other in all different we're like we ways. wouldn't mind like it's like whatever rent you can pay yeah. it's fine like we got a spot for you because it's like such a unique like they never thought they're just freshmen they're just yeah. trying to get through their year I know. <laughs> I mean, like Literally. they didn't ask for this they're i know making they just such got a here. such a tough year for them yeah. already making it so much harder yeah. so it's like However much we can make it easier in, like, our house. Like, it's, it's such a big house. Like, two stories, like, a ton of rooms. Like, of course it's, it's two stories? Yeah. Oh, no, it's, yeah, the, the bottom floor, yeah. the second floor. The party floor and then the tattoo oh, room. <laughs> the tattoo room. <laughs> Upstairs. <laughs> yeah. And then there, you guys have the other house, though. And then we Is have the other house. Is that one also a house? Stories. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are they opening up as well? Or they um, they might, they might have. Because okay. I think uh, maybe one or two of them are also going, they're going back home. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. like, one of the reasons we have is because some of our roommates are, are going back home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, like, wow. we're going to have spots open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it should be. I mean, yeah. more people, more fun, more things to do. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll come visit. I'll, I <laughs> yeah. will be here. I'm probably going to stay at Beta <clears throat> next quarter. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, you're completely... <laughs> like welcome to come nice. <laughs> especially now after this like getting to know you like, <laughs> come by whenever you want awesome. I'll use the uh, disco ball and the stripper <laughs> ball <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> why okay so why do you have that there how did you end up installing a stripper wow, pole wow I didn't know this is where the podcast was in going. your house <laughs> I'm exposing you I'm exposing you I. this is a big question this is so funny why do you have this here <laughs> I want to know whose idea was this. So that was an. I mean, it's a good idea. I think it's cool. It's um. So one of the. The biggest things about, uh, so me and Jack, Jack and I, grammar, uh, Jack and I. Yeah. Um. Had this idea like, we were talking about it like leading up to like securing a house and like when we found out we were gonna get the Costa Mesa house. Mm -hmm. Our biggest thing was just like. Because we would always talk about it freshman year, like, oh, like, one day we're going to have our house and we get to host the parties, you know? I love that. You know what I mean? Like, being piked and everything. That's awesome. So our biggest thing was, like, how can we be unique and how can we make That's our amazing. parties different yeah. from any other party? Yeah. Um, well, you really, I love it. I really so, loved it when I moved, when I walked in there and yeah. I saw that. I was like, oh, they really so, made like, themselves unique. Completely different from, like, so, like, our first, one of our biggest parties was, like, one of our first parties, which is a danger. And we had a slip and slide. Like, we had a huge inflatable slip and slide. That's crazy. And it's like, who else? Because, you know, our long-ass driveway that we have. So we had a big, full-size slip and slide in the no. in the sun. Just people, like, riding down no. water water slide and everything. No, that's amazing. Uh, both garages opened up, having a good time, you know? Oh Which lasted all day. And, like, that's way different than any other. I completely agree. The party after that, I was bartending. Yeah. It's like not many college parties have a bartending. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like a they, bartender. Not really. Like, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and one thing was like um, n having me be in charge of like having the alcohol last all night. Yeah. Usually it runs out. But since I'm the one 
like doing it like i'm giving out shots kind of conserve that yeah conserve it but just like make sure everybody's having a good time and making sure that that one person's not drinking as much because i know how many shots everybody's taking yeah so if that person keeps coming back and it's like i'm like okay you've had eight (laughs) yeah exactly. i think i'm gonna cut you off yeah definitely yeah i mean yeah and they like better yeah i mean yeah and then just knowing that it's coming from someone safe and like someone they can trust you know yeah yeah i mean because there's always that like um scare from girls that they have it's like oh like i don't want to make sure like my drinks are being protected and just yeah i mean so just making everybody feel comfortable yeah and when they come it's like they're taking a shot they're having a good time they get to film it you know just with their friends they all get to take a shot together yeah just things like that put us out and then the stripper pool and the disco ball was of course an idea by jack okay um both great ideas. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very entertaining. Yeah. It's because we're going to do Valentine's Day. and like, Was it Valentine's Day? What party was that? Was it Valentine's yeah, um, It was Valentine's Day. I think so. Yeah, I wasn't there for that. No, I wasn't there for that. What was it then? What was that party with the strip pool? Oh, um, was that was just party? the uh, Saturday night after the Newport Beach bar crawl that I did, actually. So it was just I did a Newport Beach bar crawl. I don't know if you were to that one. I think it was, I think it was um, Valentine's Day. It was the day after Valentine's Day. Yes, it was yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. It was the. It was February fifteenth. Yeah, mm-hmm. the date yeah, yeah. right after. So yeah. technically, it was our Valentine's Day party. Oh, so that Jack was, was like, Day party. "Okay." Yeah, Jack was like, "Oh, how can we make this cool?" And then he was like, "So you just installed that stripper pole for that party?" For that party. Oh, okay. I thought you've always had that. <laughs> no, That's no. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Good. I was able to experience it. <laughs> yeah. Right from the It beginning. might be making a comeback later. Oh, so we it's don't. gone now. Well, we just took it out. We didn't want a Super Bowl in the middle of our yeah, living room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were trying to watch the NBA sure. football. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It, it like taking up our couch. Oh, area. I so, see. Um, yeah, we took it off. Yeah, you can, That's like, amazing. place it. Yeah, I know. Very interesting. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> see, I'm huge on, like, creativity. Yeah. I'm huge on hosting. Like, I'm a, I love hosting yeah. and, like, throwing great events. So, like, I love that yeah. idea. It's just cool. It was cool. And, yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's just making us unique and, like, people know that house and know Costa yeah. Mesa for fun party. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and just unique experience. Well, Even you definitely catchy. gave me a unique experience. <laughs> like, wow, I stayed there till 7 a.m. I know you did. I know, that's crazy. And I sketched a tattoo on somebody. Yeah, and then... Oh, my God. That was absolutely cool. insane. Yeah. <laughs> and now I got an opportunity to do a podcast. <laughs> like, Off that. that's what that party <laughs> came out for? Like... What? Cool, huh? <laughs> Insane. Jesus. That's funny. I just came I just went to like have just some drinks and have a good yeah, time. Have a good and time. then <laughs> that's, Exactly. Oh my god. It's insane. But I loved it. Those are both great ideas and I feel like you guys will have a lot more great ideas to come. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Why well, the thing yeah. is like now with um like I'm I feel like now I'm going to keep coming back to this, but with the coronavirus. Yeah. Um or That's true, yeah. COVID-19. Yeah. Um we don't know if we're going to be able to have parties. Um, yeah. Greek life and the community might be putting yeah. everybody on social probation. I know. Yeah. Which is rumored right Probably, now. Probably, yeah. Everybody doesn't know yet, but yeah. it's just to keep people safe. I think. I know a lot of sororities yeah. and for a lot of our events um, are being questioned and yeah. some are being canceled. Yeah. Because it's group events. Um, so, yeah, we're just... Because we were planning on having uh, a danger first week back to start the quarter off right oh week one but now we're yeah. being people are gonna be gone and you know yeah definitely yeah i feel like i mean like i yeah i think that like given what's happening right now i feel like um it, it's probably just gonna kick ass mm-hmm. right now just having a good time yeah i mean no we're not we're not no one's gonna stop us from having a good time. Yeah, we're still gonna have a good time, but and I think it's right. gonna be less people. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then the thing is, like, when whenever we have things at our house, it's only big. <laughs> it's only what? It's only big parties. So oh. Like we haven't had like a small. Really. Thing. Yeah. What about tonight? You guys are having your own little. Well, I guess it's just the boys. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it might just be that. Yeah. From now on. Maybe. I mean, it's not bad, but you know, it's always yeah. gonna spice things up have yeah. A party. yeah yeah i don't know it's just interesting yeah interesting yeah. i don't know yeah what are you doing I, so what are, what, what are your plans so i am gonna stay <coughs> what are your plans spring quarter and 
and spring break. Oh, yeah. So, like, for spring quarter, I'm going to stay, for the most part, in the Theta house. Okay. Which I'm excited for because, you know, there's still going to be people around so we can, like, hang out mm-hmm. when we can. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, also, when I can, I'll probably be visiting my sister and my brother who live in the area. But my both my parents are in Cambodia. Yes. And at this point, with traveling, you know, and, know. and flights was, being canceled, I wow. don't know when I'm going to be able to see them again. And I don't really expect to see them soon. And I don't want them to be flying. I don't want to be flying. Is, Cam- is Cambodia part of the, the banned travel? Because I know Trump put a ban on travel to now China, to Europe. Yeah. And, and most I, I heard countries. about with the EU and, and with China. There were some cases in Thailand, which is neighboring with Cambodia. Mm-hmm. But I also learned that the virus doesn't live very well in warmer conditions. And Southeast Asia is right on the right next to the equator. Mm-hmm. And it's very warm all year round. So I think... Okay. I think for the most part, Cambodia is going to be safe because of the weather conditions there. But um, due to like you know flights in general, I feel like it's probably going to be Safer. hard yeah. to um, take yeah to have flights yeah, in general. And so I, I mean, I'm just happy that my mom flew back to see my dad two weeks ago, awesome. so that at least my dad's not alone and that they can mm-hmm. be together. Yeah. But I who knows how crazy these next couple of weeks or months yeah, are going to be. Is- and it a lot of people, a lot of people be. are saying that it's, it's not even, it's not even peaked yet. It's not I don't even, think so either. Yeah, like some of the estimations by like experts are insane of how many people really? are getting infected. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. So I, I like some I really are estimating much, at least a third of, of the, the U.S. population. Oh, I believe it. Isn't that insane? I believe it. And it's, I believe it's it scary. completely. Um, yeah, but so many things, so many things are going on. But I'm glad, like, in a way, like, okay, my <coughs> parents are halfway across the world, and so I might not see them for a really long time. But I'm glad that they are together. Yeah. And because I'm an adult now, I mm-hmm. can take care of myself. I don't want them to be worrying about yeah. me here. And just so maybe safer for them also to like stay yeah, a little isolated and not like, leave. You know, definitely. not be exposed too much to. I agree. I think mm-hmm. they're safe over there. It's it's definitely less isolated. It's smaller areas. Yeah. More town, less population. So yeah. 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 So but it, it's staying safe. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy what's happening. Are right you now. doing like how's that? How's it affected you? Or how's um. Yeah. Are you very like into it? Like, are you watching a lot? Are you kind of like trying to live your normal life or no like i'm definitely taking the precautions that i guess the society and government is asking everyone to take in what way because like what in w- because like um like in ways that i okay so like for spring break i've completely canceled my trip to rosarito with okay. scott I've completely canceled it. I'm mm-hmm. not going anymore. And a lot of people are going. In fact, there's about to be 5,000 people going to Rosarito Christine. from who are American students who are going this Jeez. spring break. And I, I mean, can't stop I, some people. <laughs> no, you can't. And, and that's okay with me. I'm not trying to stop yeah. anyone. But, you know, my mom called me and she was like, you know what? I'd prefer you don't go. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, that, if that's what makes you happy, mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it. And I honestly don't think that's the best idea at this yeah. point because what if you get stuck there? In Mexico, that's somewhere that I don't want to be yeah, yeah, stuck yeah. there. Of course, yeah. That that's not your, yeah. That's not my home. It's not your home. You yeah. want to be able to. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna be here for that for that five day period that I was gonna be in Rosarito, and then I also plan to go to Las Vegas right after Rosarito for the weekend. Wow, look at with you. With some friends. <laughs> She's so <laughs> easy. <laughs> that's spring break. Yeah, I know that. Well, that was the plan. I was gonna get back to Rosarito and go with some. Some friends from SoCal who wanted to go to Vegas for the weekend. And I canceled that too. Wow. Yeah. Because honestly, Las Vegas is a huge city with people coming to visit from all over the world. Yeah. And like, you know, you never know. Um, It might be safe. It might be not. But at the end of the day, I'd rather be on the safer side. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather. Seems like you are. Let my mom sleep for the night and not have to worry about me. Yeah, of course. So I'm just going to do it for everyone else and not to be yeah. selfish and not to like yeah um put myself you are keeping it safe and i think that's like yeah. the ideal thing that people should be doing um yeah there was a soccer game that 
I was supposed to go to last night with yeah. all my family, but yeah. I ended up getting canceled. Oh, they yeah. canceled it. Yeah, so a lot of sports teams, yeah. a lot of sports teams, the NBA exactly got suspended. Completely, yeah. Um, MLS also has suspended most of their season, and then big around the world things like um, so like in soccer, there's this thing called Champions League. I don't know if you're familiar. No, I don't know. So that. it's like a very very big tournament yeah. in soccer, um, like millions billions of views. Wow. Um, yeah, they're holding like non fan stadium like. They're still playing in stadiums, but there's no fans. And it's just it's the teams. It's like a high school empty. game. <laughs> no. Yeah, it feels like a high school crazy. game, and it's just so it's gonna be online. Though. It's just elite millionaire football no. like soccer players playing by themselves, pretty much, which is super interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be online though. It's yeah, gonna it's gonna be, be online. People are still gonna be able to watch, but yeah, yeah it's this whole different atmosphere. Yeah. But um. Wow. But then they don't even know if it's gonna get canceled because it might yeah. even get canceled. But it's just, um, I wanted to talk about it now. We were going to talk about it in the car, but I kind of want to save it um, for this. Yeah. It's just, to me, it feels like there's some sense of it. Like, the day I started to hear it, when I heard heard that the NBA got suspended, and then when I heard Tom Hanks (laughs) got infected. Yeah. In it started, Australia, it started to feel so. Um, it feel like it felt fake. Like it really, felt, it felt like like a movie. Yeah, no, totally. Like everything feels like that. Totally, it, everything which is, excites me in a way. But it's like it's like what's going on? You I know? know. Like it's just so yeah. weird. Like what an interesting like I didn't know that could happen. I didn't know the NBA could actually suspend. I didn't know any of this like was possible. That. I didn't know you can quarantine 16 million people in Italy. No. I mean, like, I didn't know, like, yeah, you could just do that. But yeah. I think it's crazy to yeah. see the extent of how we can work as a society, mm-hmm. as a global society. Just to get things done. Yeah. Yeah. And just be Which, safe. <laughs> in a way, it, 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 it makes me, like, excited and happy for, like, how we work yeah. as humanity. Mm-hmm. And, like, how we can do things yeah, together course. and work together to, like, mm-hmm. to reach the same goals. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. Although it's very um, crazy what's going on right now and yeah. very scary what's going to happen. Yeah. I, I really see, like, how amazing we work well as a global society. Yeah. Just trying to... I mean, when everybody has a common goal... Exactly. It's, like, easy to... It really brings us together in a way. Yeah. Yeah. That's And that's one of the best things about just people in general it's like there's a lot of similarities through all the differences I know there's a lot of similarities we have a lot of common goals where you can talk for an hour yeah (laughs) have a good time exactly Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I wanted to other than now getting off the topic on a lighter note (laughs) yeah getting off the topic of the coronavirus and all that um I wanted to ask you I wanted to ask you about just I guess your life but more school wise yeah what you're interested in doing and um, getting to know that kind of because I feel like we I at least got in a good understanding of like who you are yeah and like where you're coming from like your background yeah definitely it's just now I want to know like sad like where are you going yeah like what's the goal in the future like where where you're trying to get to yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely I feel like like you bringing me to this podcast mm-hmm. has really opened me up to like push or like push myself to like mm-hmm. being a content creator because yeah. like <laughs> I realized how much I enjoy like talking and, and making content and being yeah. you know in front of the camera mm-hmm. and I want to keep keep doing that so like yeah. in the future like I hope that I can continue to grow my Instagram account yeah. Um, in what I'm doing right now, which is freelance modeling yeah. and working with freelance photographers. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the in the long term future, like after I graduate, I hope that I can make my own YouTube account and start blogging a little bit. Yeah. And just like I've always really enjoyed like putting myself out there and putting yeah, my own course. my whole life on social media. Mm-hmm. I've never been afraid to like or hesitant to um, show myself and 
show what I'm doing and, and vlog every little thing about my life yeah. on the internet. Yeah. Um, so I want to keep doing that. Yeah. And I appreciate meeting people like you <laughs> who also want to do the same things because yeah. then it encourages me of and it, it, it builds this like support system yeah. of people that also want have the same goals mm -hmm. and it encourages me to keep doing what I want to do. Besides, you know, obviously graduating from college mm -hmm. and like wanting to get gain all of, um, mm -hmm. normal, you know, work experience. That's the thing that I, I love that you use that word, normal. <laughs> normal work experience, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like normal things. Having those, like, <laughs> dreams and aspirations, but always, like, still covering, like, that S normal, like, still, I'll like, get having this a done, backup. you know? But it's yeah. like, I know what I really want to do. I, yeah, it's it, it's hard because you have to balance that. Like yeah. I I have dreams. Yeah. But you know I also have. But a realistic yeah. mindset as well, where it's like, what do I do if I just end, you know? Yeah. But do that's what I need to do. it's the smartest thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. As long as like, you have a set base, but it's like, hey, I'm young. Try new things. Fuck it. <laughs> I, I wanna, wanna. Yeah. yeah I wanna try new things. I wanna give other but, things a shot. Riskier mm -hmm. things. Like, you know, being an influencer or a yeah, yeah, content yeah. creator, as I like to say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But at the end of the day, like, I still want to graduate college. I want to get my mm -hmm. degree. I want to have work experience. Um, I'm also thinking about going into real estate because okay. I can awesome. work with people. Yeah, yeah. And I can There's be so many outdoors outlets, yeah. more often mm -hmm. than working. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I wanted to touch on really quick was um, – that mindset that you had yeah of um which i think is very healthy and i think it's something that um people should have and sh people should share yeah is that sense of when you see other people doing it yeah there's not this sense of like jealousy there's totally. not this sense of like damn like he's doing it like or like she's doing it like like getting jealous or like being totally. bogged down like or wanting to bring them down so mm -hmm. that it brings you up but what you see yeah. And, like, what I see is, like, inspiration. Like, yeah. You're like, oh, that's fucking awesome. I like, agree. They're doing it. Like, yeah. Like, I, like, and, like, two or three um, people I've had on so far is, like, um, like I have this um, friend named Ash. And he's, yeah. like, a DJ. Yeah. But, like, he also makes music. And yeah. And he's, like, an amazing, like, he produces music and his own music. And he's, like, trying to get out there. And he performs at venues. And, you know, nice. like, yeah. when I had him on, like, listening to his story, like, I was like, oh, I want to do that. Like, that's so cool. Like, yeah. I can do that. Like, I can, you know. And yeah. then I've had, like, Ethan on and, like, just yeah. different people that are doing their own thing. And just makes you think, like, the same age, different goals. But yeah. we're all on the same path of, like, you know, we all got dreams, you know. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. So I just wanted to say, like, that's, I think that's, like, an amazing mindset. And I think a mindset that people should should have and share yeah definitely yeah. especially because i feel like we can like work together yeah to course. like both encourage each other to reach yeah. our goals because we were all kind of on the same path here mm -hmm. and we can like help each other out in terms yeah, of like of sharing each other's yeah. fans or yeah you know and, and like if you ever building each other yeah. up together let's say yeah. like a year from now you yeah. blow up yeah i'd be like come on on podcast number 125 like <laughs> sav is back <laughs> you know exactly yeah. totally mm -hmm. no there's it, it definitely new stories new like you know what i mean like that's how yes. i think it's like i gotta meet you now and like um definitely like hopefully you, you look back at this like maybe later and you're just like oh that's so cool how i thought when i was 21 and then you know yes Something definitely like that, you know? i think every little experience i have in terms of like mm -hmm. meeting new people like you and and working with people that want to create content mm -hmm. is always going to help me grow because yeah. i'm it, like this experience was so different and crazy and Unique. definitely <laughs> helped me learn like what it means to create content mm -hmm. you know and how much i enjoy it yeah well that's awesome but I, and then that just adds to your uniqueness and how <laughs> interesting you are and like how cool you are like Thanks. just to get to know it's like yeah um, your aspirations are so different from everybody else's mm -hmm. or like they're normal or traditional and like sure yeah just from your personality like it's like easy to see that you would want to be or do those kind of things because it's just like just how you are yeah you know? thank you yeah. and, and i'm talking to you helps me recognize a little bit more about me because like mm -hmm. it, sometimes people don't know who they are until they talk to someone mm -hmm. else that shares that yeah. perspective with them mm -hmm. yeah 
<laughs> having a good time. Yeah. I'm having a great time. Great. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Wow. Is there anything you wanted to ask me? Or anything, any questions you had for me? Or? Hmm, I don't know. I guess what first made you want to start making podcasts? So, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess the thing, and I think I mentioned this only once before, but I never got into too much detail about it. So I guess this would be the first time, but um, one of the main reasons I got into it was I was always part of KUCI, and that's where we're filming yeah. this. Yeah. It's KUCI, the radio station, um, using the studio and everything. But um, I, was, I was always a part of it. But this came, this time in my life where I was in this post-breakup mindset. Yeah, Of right. um, just, which ended up being the thing that forced me out and kind of pushed me into doing something totally. outside my comfort, like not my comfort zone, just outside, you know, like pushed me into doing something new and different. Yeah, definitely. And something that I thought, um would help me out because what I saw being in that in that mindset was when I would talk to family and I would talk to friends yeah um it helped me get out of like being sad and like totally. being you know like in this like so depressed so obsessed with what yeah so been. obsessed with yeah uh yeah. with with her and like yeah you know what I mean so yeah. um just conversating with people and then what like a few radio shows ended up becoming like man i wish i can make this longer and then i was like wait yeah. i can like yeah there is a streaming service <laughs> called youtube that i can yes. upload things onto yes. and just um i mean it helped me so much at the beginning um for that at like for that reason and um i think just the genuine good times that i had like it was just so much fun to make yeah. every single one and it's been so much fun and I'm having so much fun now and yeah like, um like I don't see it stopping and I right now would wouldn't want it to stop for anything yeah definitely yeah as I was saying before too like I think that was so cool that like you chose such like a healthy path mm -hmm. to take out of going out of a breakup or out of a relationship because yeah. I think a lot of people might take different routes but I think it's so cool that you took the best opportunity out of what yeah. could have been really bad <laughs> and you made the most out of it and that's so cool mm -hmm. um and i feel like that that's uh, that should always be the case where yeah. it, in life if you ever go through a bad situation it's just an opportunity for yeah. you to try something new and take a new a step forward to yeah, for to sure. start something new yeah and i think that's exactly what you did and yeah. I love that. And that's what I love to do, too, mm -hmm. is taking the bad out of something and giving yourself a new opportunity to start something amazing. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. Like, the way I see it is, like, what I ended up realizing after that was, like, like failures and, like, um, like failures are, like, some of the most important things in your life. And like 100%. Like, when that happens in your life, like, you have options and there's a way to deal with it. And that's either seclude yourself and everything but yeah if you do days are gonna go by the world's still gonna move on yeah totally and if you're gonna end up wasting precious days and time of your life secluding yourself and not yeah. moving on or like not going out and doing something then you know like yeah the world's not gonna stop for you, you know? yeah so totally but i think learning that and understanding that concept which was really hard to do and it took me a while to understand that yeah. and realize that. But as soon as I did, I was like, we got to go all the way, you know? Like, yeah. We got to do something and we got to do something like, That's awesome. Fun. Yeah. And I feel like out of doing that, you found a little bit more, you like learned a little bit more about yeah, yourself. Yeah, of course. And you've grown from it and mm -hmm. you've, and you've, you know, filled that void with something mm -hmm. else yeah, yeah. in your life. And I think yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> And but like, um yeah for myself like i feel like also getting out of a relationship like nine months ago 
there is was also a place for me to like grow yeah um yeah and I feel like just like coming out of that relationship like I was able to have more space to figure Mm -hmm. out who I want to be as an individual and as someone who is now independent Mm -hmm. and doesn't have to rely on someone else and that's why I decided to um, well that's and then I had the opportunity to study abroad in Shanghai yeah and that was just like the most amazing experience because I was able to be really independent yeah of course during that time can I ask you a question yeah and I don't know if this is like um, too deep or anything okay I know I've said that before it's just like last thing you want to do is like ask you a question that you don't want to answer it okay um, I was wondering if um, from what you've told me before and yeah. about your background and everything yeah. I was wondering if did you ever feel pressured to uh, be in a relationship due to the fact that you had not an immediate support system like family wise and like your parents and everything yeah that's a really interesting question yeah actually I never really thought about that Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I know that's why it might be like yeah, out of the blue or like, like too deep. <laughs> not too deep, just because I'm, tr- I guess I'm right now diving into it right now mm-hmm. and thinking about it. But like looking back, I guess you could say I didn't have as much of a support system at a younger age because mm-hmm. I was distanced from my parents at a younger yeah. age. But I'm not sure if that completely led to me wanting to rely on someone else mm-hmm. um, in a relationship. Or just seeking that. As not so much relying, but just like seeking. Seeking it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I know feel like, like being in a relationship, like that's one of the best parts of it is like having that constant support system or having someone to 100%. Like go to. 100%. You know it know is. Mean? Yeah. So like I was just yeah. wondering if like. Yeah. Maybe that played a role. Maybe I'm just totally. fishing too much. I mean, it's a really good question because I do feel like in general, I do always seek a little bit more of a support system mm-hmm. than what I had. Yeah. You know, I've definitely, like, I will admit to that. I do mm-hmm. see, I do seek that support. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if it roots back to relationships um, so lacking a physical relationship with okay. your parents. I don't know. That's a really good question. <laughs> That is a really, really good question. Mm-hmm. Um, but all, then again, I've also always had my sister by my side. Okay. Who that was helps. only a yeah, that helps barely so a year older, than, like yeah. about a year older than me. Mm-hmm. And she's always like really been a rock in my life, always been a really great support system yeah. and always been there for me, like without a doubt. So having her around, um, I don't know if I really saw it more mm-hmm. um, than that. But I don't know. That's a really good question. What about you? Like, yeah. um, what, what about you? I, I don't think for me specifically, I don't think it was a factor so much mm-hmm. because I have such a strong family yeah. support system. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like I can see, like when I look back at it, like, I know I like, yeah, even seeing that question, like I'm like, yeah, maybe like. You kind of have to juggle with maybe it was a part of that. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's just everybody seeks some sort of, like, support system. It's just, like, I had such a strong family connection, but yeah. back home. Yeah. And then being away from home and, like, trying to find that here in school, like, through the fraternity and through, like, different friends. And just, yeah. Yeah. It's always so, so different, though, when you have, like someone you're emotionally connected to and also physically connected to when you have like a girlfriend or like a boyfriend so I mean yeah I think it was maybe like a small maybe it played a small part in like having someone not back home but having someone in my new life of being at UC Irvine living here yeah Yeah, so I I would say played a little bit 30 maybe yeah 30 (laughs) percent Yeah. In that choice, kind yeah. of. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I just, I guess, like, maybe it's it's something to do with where we are right now and, like, mm-hmm. being in college and, and our age. It's just a unique. Where we are. Yeah, and such a fun time. It, I don't, yeah. Just and it's yeah, very, strange. like, confusing time yeah. for us as well because we're for constantly sure. meeting new people. Mm-hmm. And I guess, in a way, we're, we're living in a new environment where mm-hmm. we, we don't really know a lot of people we don't really know where we're living we're very far from home yeah and 
I guess a lot that um, a lot of us are seeking is is like a stability. Yeah. Someone that we can really rely on all the time. Yeah. So. But there's always that scary thing of being too comfortable and like yeah and like um too comfortable too soon and also like i've like talked about this this was a the first ever podcast i ever did but never saw the light of day um yeah i did this it was like on the radio it was like the first ever like yeah sort of podcast that we did and it was this idea of um complacency and Mm -hmm. it was the first time i did it with jack and jordan and we talked about um never being complacent and always doing what you want to do yeah and like what we were saying where like some people want to seek comfort and stability yes definitely but it's like this is such an exciting time in 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 life definitely. being in college and definitely. learning and definitely just being open you know like yes. you grow so much as a person like yeah i'm guessing you are 100 percent different than the person you were freshman year 100 percent. Yeah. right like night and day you know what i mean definitely so, definitely like just playing into that and like being okay and being uncomfortable with being like being comfortable with being uncomfortable you know in college yeah. and just learning and totally, totally, you know totally. being out of your comfort zone like yeah it's college you know that's the best I, time to do I it is right yeah. now you know i think it's like one of the best times to be mm-hmm. um your own self and in a way to be uh disattached from your family yeah because you are able to only be you and only to represent yourself and not be, not have these um, attachments towards, mm-hmm. you know, your brother and your sister and your parents and your old friends. Like, yeah. you can just be you, and I've met you only as you. I don't yeah. know <laughs> your background. I don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. the baggage that you carry. Mm-hmm. I don't know any of that. That's true. Yeah, and so y- I think it's a, it's a place for us to kind of be who we are and represent ourselves mm-hmm. however we want to exactly. and that can really teach us a lot about how we want to present ourselves mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah fun interesting yeah. times <laughs> and i think that like like in my past relationship i was in a relationship for like two years in college and mm. i think that um what you mentioned is a very big thing which was a which Huge is a big part thing of my college career. College career is like four yes. years, so that's like yes. half, maybe yeah. Probably half of my college career, yeah. which I don't regret. But as you, as we were talking about mm-hmm. before, it definitely can pull you back from who you are as an independent person, as an individual, exactly. mm-hmm. because that other person may influence you mm-hmm. and can, um, in a way, like pull you back from things that you want to pursue for example the podcast that you created out of this yeah. breakup in a way yeah, yeah um and i have no regrets in like the relationship that i had but mm-hmm. in a way um being an independent individual you allows you exactly to yeah, do so much more mm-hmm. and gives you the freedom and time and power and energy to pursue anything that you want to do without really considering other things yeah (laughs) that's true yeah which is crazy (laughs) yeah but that's what i appreciate about college yeah yeah just being able to stop it's yeah it's 12 41 (laughs) 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 and i'm very surprised that you're still here (laughs) talking to me (laughs) it's kind of crazy yeah it is I have no idea where the time went. I don't even know how long I've been talking <laughs> like, for. I just literally looked at <laughs> the, the clock right now and I was like, oh my god. It's, I don't like, even know what time we started, though. Yeah. <laughs> I think we started at 9.30. No. Yeah. Oh, no. That's insane. Well, that's perfect. That's like two hours. Yeah. I mean, we've been, I mean, I've been enjoying it. Like, I. Good. I have, too. I feel yeah. like we got really deep in, like, a lot of different areas. Yeah. Yeah. Touched a lot of things. Yeah. I guess I had a lot of say about of course what yeah. i want to say of course um, <laughs> yeah 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 but i appreciate you helping me open up about everything you are very welcome i'm <laughs> so grateful and so thankful that you were so excited to come on yeah i was super excited to too this was super fun yeah. and it helped me like really realize like what i want to do in the future awesome Yes. I'm so, so thank you so ha- thank you for having me on. Honestly, yeah, really appreciate it. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if it's fine with you, yeah, I think 
I think it was good. I think yeah. it was a good podcast. I think, um, like I said, like we both said, we had a great time. And I, I hope you guys that. had a great time listening. Yes. This is when we break the fourth wall. Yes. <laughs> we finally talk to the people. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, guys, for listening. Um, do you want to? Yeah, definitely. Away, talk and to them. They're right before there. I end it, I just want to <laughs> say if you really enjoyed getting to know me, I have an Instagram. My Instagram is at SupSav. I also have TikTok, which is also SupSav. And is- yeah, oh, and I have a YouTube which has one video right now, which um, <laughs> is a vlog of my 21st birthday which in Shanghai super cool. while I was studying abroad in Shanghai. Super. So you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Savannah Mullen. Yeah, so thank yeah. you so much for getting to know me and getting to know us yeah, and watching you. this. <laughs> awesome, guys. And then, um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Yes. Thanks for listening. Awesome. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>